Welcome into Nats Extra Pregame. Dan Kolko with you here at Wrigley and Mark Zuckerman from MassInSports.com joining me as well. And Mark, you have some history in this ballpark. You went to Northwestern just up in Evanston. And it's great to be here on the north side of Chicago as it always is. And the weather could not be better. And as I said, what a way for the Nationals to wrap up this road slate. It's always fun coming back into this yard when we haven't been here in a year. It all hits you again. And it doesn't matter how many times you come. There are probably fans watching watching back in the D.C. area that have been here to Wrigley. Every time you return, you just get a, a piece of history, and it's fantastic. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the weather, though. I was prepared for late September <laughs> We're in not Chicago. This is, not, this is summertime, which is great. Not complaining about it, but it's very odd to feel this in, in late September. We were talking earlier about how they've done such a good job in recent years of renovating the place without taking away the charm of it. It still looks like it's been here for 100 plus years in the best possible way. Yeah, they added the video boards and some other stuff, but widen the concourses, uh, added stuff to the clubhouse, which was desperately needed. But it still feels authentic. It is the true neighborhood ballpark tucked into Wrigleyville like this. And, you know, I first came here probably 1994 as a freshman at Northwestern. So we're talking 30 years, and it hasn't lost any of the charm in those 30 years. Yeah, they got the seats across the, the street, the Wrigley Roof. Rooftop seats, they got the ivy there in front of the brick walls uh, out here in the outfield. This ballpark opened in 1914. The Cubs didn't start playing here until 1916, and it wasn't named Wrigley Field until 1920. But, you know, over 100 years of being named Wrigley Field and hosting the Cubs here in this yard. And, Mark, you mentioned it. They, the changes that have been made, they started with the home clubhouse, but it's made its way over to the visiting side. And so now it feels a little bit different here from our standpoint. And from the team standpoint, they've widened the dugout a bit the clubhouse has not gotten necessarily a ton bigger but a lot nicer and they've modernized the place while still as you said keeping it feeling like a historic yard. yeah let's be clear for many years it did not look like a major league clubhouse no. not by modern standards <laughs> that we would expect and I think for a lot of players who would come in for the first time they were shocked by that I always loved seeing guys walk down the tunnel the very long dark tunnel with twists and turns to make it out to the field for the first time thinking like where is it where is it it's got to be here somewhere well, they have fixed a lot of that up finally. It's a good, uh, nice, modernized clubhouse, I guess we'll call it. Uh, but again, keeping all the old school charm of the old scoreboard back there. They've done a little bit to the press box, not a whole lot, but that's fine. We're not number one priority. But it it is always special. And um, again, I think the key is how they have kept the charm of it kept it it's still authentically Wrigley yeah. while feeling a little more modern. What's wild is that a football team graced the resident clubhouse here and made it its home for many many years. Think about 53 pro football players fitting in there and trying to get ready for a They're game. They're still playing football here. My Northwestern Wildcats have two okay. games here in November. And boy are we excited about yes. that. Um, Mark let's talk about the baseball team now. The Nationals come out of a series at City Field where they really struggled offensively. They scored first in the first two games of that series and then it was all Mets the rest of the way. Only two runs scored in those three games for the Nationals. You watched that series in New York. What did you make of the Nationals' offensive approach, and especially with runners in scoring position? That number there, one for 19, just is not going to win you ball games. No. Now, the first game of that series, it felt really significant because that game was there for the taking. It was tight. It was low scoring. They played a good, clean game in so many ways. They just could not get that one hit, especially when you got to the ninth and then the tenth innings with a chance to take the lead for good. They couldn't do it. Now, the next two nights, yes, they took an early lead, but within a few, they were down and down by a lot and so you understand why as much as we don't want to admit it you're down it's late in the season it's a little harder to get up for some of those at bats over the say the second half of game so not going to excuse it but you understand it a little bit more clearly the Mets had their number this year 11 and 2 against them and pitching was a huge part of that it just for whatever reason was a bad matchup for the Nationals this year hopefully that turns around here against the Cubs because it feels like especially the talent they have in the lineup now it should be a more productive lineup than we saw the last couple of days and they were facing a Mets team that was locked into every pitch knowing that they're battling out uh, a couple teams for some playoff positioning the Cubs seven games back of a wild card spot entering play today knowing that they are almost certainly out of it. 
Patrick Corbin will get the ball for the Nationals in game one of this series. The Nats are four and one in his last five starts. His cutter velocity has ticked up. His cutter usage has ticked up. Do you, and in your conversations with Patrick, does he equate the success of late specifically to that cutter, or is there more to it? He's trying to say that it's more than just that. Um, the cutter velocity has gone up, which I think that has made a big difference. It's helped uh, make the slider more effective as well because now it's two pitches that break but coming in at slightly different speeds uh, and a different type of break so that has worked for him and the fastball command has been good so you put it all together and you have the makings of an effective starting pitcher for the better part uh, of a month here now the way this is set up now with Trevor Williams returning it's gonna be a six-man rotation so we're looking at two more starts for Patrick Corbin tonight and then next Thursday at home against the Royals and we'll see how this all finishes out you would love for him given how hard the last few years have been, but how it all started for him in 2019, you'd love for him to be able to finish on a high note, and I think he might be feeling a little something for these last two starts. Interesting to see the Nationals lineup today when it first came out, Mark. Darren Baker is going to start for the Nats today, his first major league start, and it will come in a ballpark where his dad obviously managed for a handful of seasons. So he will play second base for the Nationals, which means that Luis Garcia Jr. will not. Still dealing with that wrist issue. What did Davey say about those two and Luis status going forward? Yeah, for Garcia, it's still sore, sore wrist. He's had it a few different times this season. It really cropped up uh, the other night against the Mets when he took a swing. And so at this point in the season, they're not going to take a whole lot of chances with that. And it may be more than just tonight, but it was interesting and, and it worked out well for Darren Baker to get that first start tonight. It's against a righty, so it makes sense to do that. Obviously being in Chicago, a little sentimental value to that. He may get some more starts here if Louis has to miss more games. And look, Darren's been here for a long time. I looked it up. He actually was the guest conductor for the seventh inning stretch as a four-year-old in 2003, Melissa held him up in the press box and he sang to the whole crowd tonight he'll get to experience the seventh inning stretch as he's warming up at second base pretty cool yeah the cool big league experiences continue for darren baker that's going to be awesome mark thank you as always all right thanks sam